Okay, so now that we've extensively covered the geometric sequence in the, our channel, let's talk about the geometric series. Okay, so a series is the summation of any infinite sequence. So in the case of a geometric progression or a geometric sequence, for example, if we take the sequence t sub n such that we have 2, 6, 18, 54, and so on and so forth, the geometric series would be 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54 plus so on and so forth. So we're just adding up all of the terms in this particular sequence. So in this particular example, we have the starting value or the scale factor A equals 2 and the common ratio R equals 3. So for a more general geometric series where we express all the terms in terms of A and R, we know the first term is A, then the second term is AR, third term is AR squared, AR cubed, so on and so forth, AR to the n minus 1, and the series then, the sequence then continues. So in this case, the geometric series is A plus AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed plus AR to the fourth plus so on and so forth. Now, in my video introducing geometric sequences, which I'll link up in the top left-hand corner here, at the end of the video, I listed a few properties of geometric sequences, and a couple of them are, if the absolute value of the common ratio is greater than 1, the sequence will display exponential growth. And that means the series will be divergent. And what that means is the series will not add up to a finite value. And that's because every one of these terms is getting larger and larger and larger. So if we keep on adding numbers that are getting larger and larger and larger, we're going to sum to an arbitrarily large number. So if you like infinity. So we'll say we'll not have a finite value. Now, conversely, if the common ratio, if the absolute value is less than 1, then the, se the sequence displays exponential decay. And so we say the series then is convergent. Now, to make sense, I really should put the word is there. So before, where the numbers are getting larger and larger and larger, which means the sum is getting also larger and larger and larger. In the second case, where the absolute value of R is less than 1, the terms after the first term are actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which means as the numbers go on, they tend towards 0. So that means a series will actually have a finite value. Okay, so we're going to look at now how to add up a uh, series. Let's just call these cases 1 and 2. Let's take our first example here. Now just because we can't sum up the entire series when the magnitude of r is greater than 1, so in this case here we have r equals 3 which is greater than 1, so just because we can't sum up the entire series it doesn't mean we can't sum up a part of the series. So if we just sum up say the first n terms where n is actually a finite number, what we're going to do is sum up t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus so on and so forth until we get to tn. So for instance, let's say s3, we're simply going to sum up t1 plus t2 plus t3, which means we're going to sum up the numbers 2 plus 6 plus 18, which equals 26. And similarly for S4, 
So we have big S sub 4, which means we're summing the series up to the fourth term. So that'll be T sub 1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4, which equals 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 54, which equals the number 80. So you might be wondering then, that's quite a tedious process, especially when we get to very large numbers. And in some applications, we will get to quite large terms. So is there then a formula to find the sum up to n terms? And the answer to that is yes. So let's derive that formula. And it's quite a simple formula to derive. So we know that in general, again, big S sub n is the sum to the nth term. So again, now let's write it out. It's t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus da 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 plus tn. Let's write it out in terms of the general expression for the terms. So the first term is always a, and it's ar, ar squared plus da 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 plus AR to the N minus 1. And if you like, I can factor out an A. So we have then inside the brackets 1 plus R plus R squared plus so on and so forth R to the N minus 1. Okay, so now is where things get clever because if I take the product R by SN, so if I multiply S sub N by the common ratio R, what are we going to get? So simply we're going to get T1 times R, let's write it out, T2 times R, T3 times R, plus da 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 da, plus T sub N times R. Let's just change colors a bit. Okay, so what though? Well remember, again if we write it out in terms of the general formula for the terms, T1 is still A, but we're multiplying it by R. T2 is AR. We're multiplying that by R. T3 is AR. Sorry, AR squared. We're multiplying that by R. Plus, plus TN is AR to the N minus 1. And we're multiplying that by R. And again, you can factor out an A. You don't have to. But inside the brackets, now we're going to get R plus R squared plus r cubed, plus so on and so forth, plus r to the power of n. Okay, so what do we do now? Okay, well first let's call this equation A, and let's call this one equation B. So let's take the difference between equation B and equation A. So we're going to have r by Sn minus Sn, which equals, now if I take these lines, it's going to be A outside of R plus R squared plus R cubed plus so on and so forth plus R to the power of N minus A outside of 1 plus R plus R squared plus so on and so forth until r to the n minus 1. So if we factor out the a, we have in a big set of brackets r plus r squared plus r cubed plus da 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 plus r to the power of n minus 1 minus r minus r cubed, sorry, r squared minus da 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 minus r to the n minus 1. Okay, so that's taking the negative into this set of brackets here. So now we can go through and eliminate uh, terms because r cancels out with negative r, r squared cancels out with negative r squared. This here should be an r cubed, and r cubed is going to cancel out with the r cubed which is not written here, but what you can see is eventually all of these terms will be eliminated until we simplify this to a outside of r to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so these are the only two terms that will not be eliminated as part of this 
subtraction process. So what we can do now then is to rearrange. Let's take out an SN, factor out an SN. So on the left hand side we have SN outside of R minus 1. And on the right hand side that's equal to A outside of R to the power of N minus 1. And then if we take this term in the parentheses downstairs, we simplify to S sub N equals A outside of R to the N minus 1 all over R minus 1. Okay, so what we have derived is just one version of the formula to find the sum of a geometric series to the nth term. Now you may have also seen it written like this, Sn equals A outside of 1 minus R to the power of N over 1 minus R. And that's done just by factoring out a negative 1 on the top and bottom and then cancelling the negative 1. So that's valid as well. And in fact this is the version we're going to use to derive the sum to infinity the actual sum of a geometric sequence. So when the absolute value of R is less than 1, I said that the series is convergent and it will have a finite value. So the sum to infinity, or the sum of the series, will be finite. So how do we find that value then? Well, let's work it out. So let's actually sub the value of infinity, even though we can't, but let's say that we can. We're basically putting in an infinitely or a really, really large number into the formula here. So we've got a outside of 1 minus r to the power of a really, really large number minus, uh, sorry, over 1 minus r. So if we take the limit as n approaches infinity, of r to the power uh, to the power of n. Remember how I said that if r is less than one, the powers of r are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as n gets larger and larger and larger. So eventually this number will go to zero when we have a sufficiently large number. It'll be approaching zero as n gets larger and larger and larger. So just to illustrate, let's take r is equal to half we know that then r squared equals 0.25, r cubed is 0.125, r to the power of 4 is 0 .00, sorry, 0 0.0625. So as you can see, the numbers are diminishing quite quickly, and they'll just get smaller and smaller as we go larger and larger in terms of index. So effectively, r to the power of infinity is equal to 0, which means the sum of a geometric sequence or the geometric series with r, with the absolute value of r less than 1, is equal to a divided by 1 minus r. Okay, so we're going to be doing some practice exercises with each of these formulas that we derived in the next uh, upcoming videos. That'll do it for this video. If you have found it helpful, please like it, share it on social media, and make this channel famous. Subscribe for more videos that may help you with your studies. If you have any questions, use the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you may have. For now, best of luck with your math studies, and I'll see you on the next video.